Music is something that is very important to me and I'm sure is very important to a lot of you guys out there as well. A YouTuber by the name of Patrick CC was a YouTuber that I watch a lot on my Twitch streams and uh, you know, a YouTuber who I, I generally mess with a lot of his videos. And from the title here, I know it's a little bit inflammatory. He says autotune ruined music. Now me personally, I absolutely love autotune. I think autotune can create some really beautiful sounds and melodies and really turn people's voices into sort of an instrument that complements music more so than it detracts from it. Now, is there shitty autotune? Of course. Is autotune a quick access pass to making lazy, really redundant music? Yes, but I also think just like everything else, it's a tool that can be used extremely creatively and can be used to make some of the best music we've ever heard. I mean, let's talk about T-Pain's giant run, very fire. Let's talk about a lot of the artists that are out now who use a lot of autotune. You know, you get somebody like Travis Scott, you get like the Young Thugs, the Lil Babies, the Gunners, a lot of everybody is using autotune even drake is using autotune even the pop stars that have really beautiful voices are using autotune the weekend's using autotune everybody's using autotune to varying degrees and i love it i love the spot that music is in right now i think it's very diverse and there's a little bit of something for everybody if you want to be able to fall asleep to some music and you don't want no autotune hey man i'm sure dreamville's cooking something up If you want to get lit, you want to fucking go crazy at the function, hey, I'm sure Travis Scott's still working on Utopia, whatever. But regardless, let's go ahead and watch this video and see for ourselves what kind of points he makes here, because I'm sure he'll make some pretty valid points. Saying autotune ruined music is an exhausted argument that old people have been complaining about for the past few years. Okay, so years. far I agree. Their assumption is that you can use the tool on anyone's voice and it will magically make them a great singer. Which is not true. You actually have to be able to sing in key to be able to use autotune effectively. Have you heard T-Pain actually sing before? He's got a great singing voice. You have to be able to know how to carry your tune. You have to be able to sing in key to have autotune sound really good. Now you can force it, but it's going to sound bad the worst that the raw vocal performance actually is. Which is only partially true. Look at this bad singer with autotune versus a good singer with autotune. To the fire, mm. to the limit, to the $10,000 microphone he's using right there, by the way. That's a Sony C800. I know you all very much care about that. Oh, I sound good. Yeah, you know. Yeah, you know I've been looking for you. So Basically, the tool Yeesh. can make a bad singer somewhat tolerable and a good singer sound near perfect. But some artists use it for creative purposes. T-Pain is the artist most commonly okay. associated with autotune, okay. and he's actually a phenomenal singer. He used the effect in 2004 not to be better, but to be different. Yeah. During the beginning of this video, I want you to stop thinking about artists like T-Pain, Travis Scott, Kanye West, and anyone else who uses autotune as a creative effect. Okay. That's not who we're talking about right now. Okay. The artists in question are the ones who are understood to be good or great singers, but use autotune to achieve perfection. I don't really find a problem with that either. Cause like I've made music before, so I know what it's like to have like a really good take of a verse or a hook or something that you've that you're doing, but then to have like missed a note or something, or to have like one little vocal inflection ruin that whole take, but you really like that take. As long as it's not anything too egregious that's out of their range, which I think a lot of these singers can hit a lot of those ranges that they use autotune for, but maybe I'm wrong. I could be completely wrong on that. Note that autotune is a plugin program that was invented by Andy Hildebrand in 1997. The word auto is important because the program automatically perfects their singing in mm -hmm. real time. Shortly after, another similar program was invented called Now Melodyne, Melodyne is crazy. The goal of these tools, pitch correction. When an artist sings, they're trying to hit specific notes. If they miss a note, these tools will essentially force the sound recording up or down in pitch to correct the error. But missing a note is not an error. It's called character, style, mm. color, emotion. Sure, if you miss every note or are constantly missing notes, you are just bad at singing. But the way a singer misses the notes is what makes them unique. Listen to the before and after pitch correction on a great singer's voice. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. Ain't no sunshine when she's gone. You may not be able to hear a huge difference, but the version with Melodyne removes some of the soul in Bill's voice. Here's an example that is mm. a little more obvious. Let me go home. Notice how that E4 note Michael Buble sang is a perfectly straight line? This would be like pressing down on a piano. The accuracy is next to impossible to achieve. Okay, by but I still don't get why that really matters. His singing just kind of sounds like noise. 
like a robot. Okay, so I will agree with Buble in particular, that, but I think that he just makes music that sounds like kind of manufactured, like formulaic, I guess. Now, Freddie Mercury is considered to be one of the best of all time, but this singing isn't perfect pitch. You can see he's missing some notes, but it still sounds amazing, filled with emotion, with life. Mm -hmm. Perfect pitch removes the human element of the voice, but these days, Human connection doesn't even matter. Not using autotune might actually do more harm than good. If human connection mattered, then electronic dance music wouldn't be as popular as it is. In most uh... genres, it seems like the connection comes from the rhythm of the beat or the lyrics, rather than the actual voice of the I guess I don't really see what the big deal is if somebody uses autotune. Like, he still hasn't made something that convinced me that, like, using autotune actually detracts from the music in any way. I get how he's saying that it removes a human connection. And I think for some songs, that is true. The cases that he showed in the beginning with, like, Beyonce, Mariah Carey, and Adele, like, I feel like they have made very great personal music, even with the use of autotune, they still have managed to create a very good personal connection, despite the fact that they use autotune or melodyne to create that perfect pitch that's kind of unnatural. I think we can agree that hearing an artist perform their work with no effects makes us feel something. I couldn't fight it, I'd hoped you'd see my face, and that you'd be reminded that for me. Woo! Yeah! There's something special about a human that can sing so well. Even singers who don't have amazing pitch are able to evoke an emotional response to the listener based on the passion they convey. Mm. Free Melly. Actually, maybe the streets are safer, but he made really good music, man. It's just, you know, sad. Crazy. So you would assume that live performances is where you get to see all your favorite artists perform their songs in their natural voice. Maybe. Some singers are very adamant about not using autotune in live performances, but sometimes autotune is applied to their microphones without them even knowing. Yo, can we, let's, I know we're live right now, but I think you guys have some tune on my vocals or something. Bieber's autotune was likely set to the wrong key which was making his singing sound terrible. If it was in the right key, he may not have even noticed. Damn. But does a singer using autotune live ruin the value of the performance? Is it dishonest? When you consider they have to dance, engage the crowd, and pace themselves properly for one or two hours, they get fatigued and are likely to miss some notes. I honestly think that there there is value to like having that raw recording. And I, I can agree with that. Like, I think there is a lot of value there. But at the same time, I know this discourse has been happening on Twitter for like the past week or so where singers are talking about like, yeah, I'm going to use auto tune when I'm performing or something like that. Because like being able to hit that perfect pitch like in a studio or something is one thing than hitting it like live or whatever. And because of the spread of social media and the virality of things like that, right? Like if you fuck up or you're not pitch perfect or some shit on stage people are gonna spread that say that you're badass singing whatever all that bullshit that could harm your career like realistically again i feel like if the note you're trying to hit is within your skill set to hit i don't see even if it's not though i still don't see what's wrong with it like again because it can be used creatively you know what i mean again you're gonna have people making soulless empty music or whatever the fuck it is what it is but then you're gonna have dudes that are gonna use it you know really well you're gonna have women using it very well you're gonna have just people in general that are gonna use it as a very good creative tool. It doesn't really matter what type of music is playing or who is performing it, as long as the energy and environment is right. Most rappers don't even perform their songs. They just play the MP3 version that you would listen to on Spotify and they jump around screaming that is true. words. But rap fans still love these concerts. Yeah, I'm sorry. Save for like a select few, going to a rap concert or rap performance is the worst shit you could ever do. I've been to a couple. Actually, I've been to a a uh, a Method Man and Red Man concert. That shit was fire. They were actually performing. And then I went to. Look, I did not go to this one willingly. My friend had some tickets. He wanted me to go with him. We went to a Joyner Lucas concert. Okay, that was the worst shit I've ever. I'm not gonna lie one of the worst things i've ever been to in my life i'm not i'm just not gonna lie he showed up 
barely performed like two songs, restarted one song, no word of a lie, like five or six times, and it was ass. It was terrible. And then all the opening acts were literally just like playing their MP3s that they handed to the DJ on his MacBook or whatever the fuck, and then they were just like kind of sometimes rapping along. It just, it just is what it is. So if you have a, a passionate performer, yeah, okay, rap performances are gonna be fire. But I just feel like that's not very common. I am not a Lucas, sir. Towards auto tune varies from genre to genre. In EDM. Nobody cares. Daft Punk have been using all kinds of crazy vocal effects since their inception, and nobody ever mentions them. After all, it is called electronic music. In hip hop, it was heavily rejected at first, but thanks to a few legendary artists such as T Pain, Kanye West, and Lil Wayne, over time it became beloved. Now, most hip hop fans don't mind the use of I it. actually feel like it's funny you brought up Lil Wayne. I feel like Lil Wayne is an example of horrible auto tune using. And Kanye West, too, actually. Like during that era, like where they were rapping with auto tune on, that just sounds terrible. I'm sorry. Like the like the rapping with auto tune on is ass. Effect. In rock, pop, country, and other genres that have been traditionally dominated by talented vocalists, is where artists get the most criticism. I mean, these are some of the oldest genres where 50, 60, 70 years years ago, your performance was everything. You wouldn't have a career if you weren't a good vocalist. These days, if you don't use autotune, it might actually hurt your potential. Kids and young adults will always be deciding what the status quo is for pop culture. If you don't have a young fan base, you won't be topping the charts. Young people have been so mm. conditioned to hearing perfect pitch for the past 20 years that when we hear something that isn't perfect, it sounds unprofessional or unfinished. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like a lot of people love stuff like the uh, NPR Tiny Desk concerts. People really love live performances. If you look up live performances of songs, they have like millions upon millions of views. And a lot of times people are in the comments saying like, wow, this feels so much more real or so much more emotional than the actual recording like i wish this was the official version a lot of this stuff like people still really love that stuff although i do think he is right where like for whatever reason even though like those have millions and millions of views that could still be a niche compared to like the larger scope of things like there has to be a certain level of like production quality there i think if you really want to have like a lot of staying power like yeah it's one thing to have a song like blow up on tiktok and and stuff like that and it not be mixed professionally well and that's why you know i i love this new era of music because you can make a song post it up on soundcloud or whatever the fuck and have it blow up on tiktok and boom now you have a career but uh i do see what he's saying when you think about like a lot of the top charting music and when you think about a lot of the music that's getting plays and stuff like that a lot of it does have that sort of uh manufactured type of sound now the barrier to entry into the music industry is lower than ever anyone can buy a 50 dollars microphone online download or purchase a DAW and auto-tune and record a song, then post it on TikTok, go viral, and get a record deal. Yeah. But is that a bad thing? If people like the song, then they like the song. Music is subjective after all. However, some artists will spend years and years mastering their craft, only for it to fall on deaf ears, whereas others blow up by accident or off a gimmick. Does one you can't really do nothing about that though and that's always been a thing like even when you're talking about like back in the you know 40s 50s 60s or whatever i'm sure there was a ton of really talented people that could really really sing and love to sing but never got nowhere with it i just feel like that's a thing whenever you're doing something like artistically like this you can't really avoid that should there be a new grammy or award or category for real singers or non-auto-tuned singers Autotune is just another technological advancement that was bound to happen. Humans are always trying to make things easier, faster, more efficient. People think that singing is just a natural talent. It mostly isn't. It takes years and years of practice and training, along with maintaining that skill. Singers are constantly warming up their vocals, making sure they eat and drink properly, and trying to maintain their skill. But if you are pretty good, or very good, or kinda good, just slap a little bit of autotune and speed up that process. Because if you spend I just don't too much time perfecting Again, like, I think that's just a, a barrier to entry. It's kind of like, like, let's say, for example, you are super passionate about basketball. You love basketball. You spent your entire life studying the game, learning how to do, like, all the dribble moves, how to shoot well, all that stuff. But you're 5'4". You just didn't, you just did not happen to be a six foot three guy, which happens to a lot of people. All your passion, everything, like, you can't, it's fucked. 
Like, it doesn't matter how much you want it, you can't, like, you're not gonna be an NBA player. Just point blank and period. Now, if there were a way to have that passion be unimpeded and to have you play in the NBA, despite the fact that you're 5'4", I feel like that'd be a good thing. Like, if you could learn to at least be in key and use auto-tune, and now that allows you to make music and to be creative and to be passionate, I just think that's a good thing. I don't see why that is considered a negative. Like, less barriers to entry for anything artistic is great. I think everybody needs like an artistic outlet for themselves because it's really good and it feels really good to improve or to just express yourself artistically whether that be through painting digital art drawing you know pastels music whatever all that stuff is like super rewarding and if having auto-tune makes somebody feel more confident and comfortable with making music who knows maybe they can be the next person to change music and i love the fact that music is so accessible to create now like i was watching jade arts do a live stream and this motherfucker is like literally making a song like on a website like did, i don't know what the fuck you sound lab or something like that this nigga is making music layering vocals on a fucking website like that's awesome fuck the barrier to entries like allow anybody to just make music with anything they have you can make music on your fucking phone there's i think something called like band lab or something like that, that you can download on your phone and make music on your phone i've seen people on tiktok like make full songs straight off of their phone that's awesome Everybody should be able to have that accessibility to do something like that. The world is moving at an incredible pace, and greatness takes time. But people don't want to wait for greatness anymore. So most artists are not willing to take the risk and miss their chance at achieving their music dream. That was a that was a decent video. I think I overall I thought he was gonna have like some better points. He did make some good points there, but I think overall I generally disagree with what he was saying. But I think that's fine. You know, you don't have to agree with everybody. Uh, so shout out Patrick CC. Go ahead. Uh, his link will be in the description below, guys. If you guys want to go ahead and check him out. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, all that bullshit. And uh, yeah, man. Peace out.